Good evening, everyone. It's time to get back in God's Word just a little while. And I thank Him for another opportunity for allowing me to make this video. And I pray that the Lord will bless each listener and help us all to understand a little bit more about our Savior and the Lord Jesus Christ and what we must do to inherit eternal life. <clears throat> our most our most kind and gracious Heavenly Father as we come to you once again, you and praise you and give you all the honor and glory that we know how to give. And thank you one more time for this opportunity that you have given us to get in your word. I anoint these lips of clay that they may speak your word with understanding that will lead and draw someone to you. I pray, Lord, you fill each listener full of your Holy Spirit and that joy down within to know they are your children and they have been born again and washed in your blood and give us all a stronger desire to follow you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now we're going to be reading in uh, 1 Corinthians, Apostle Paul's teaching. And I'm going to be reading, begin reading about verse 30. But we'll be reading from the King James Version Bible. And if you have your Bibles, read along with me. And we will see what he's telling all of us. Because what he tells one, he tells all. Some people think today he just speaks to them. But no, the word is spoken to all. Whether they have it, it's still spoken to them. And it's their choice. And if they die lost without God, they can't blame nobody but self. God wasn't to blame because he left them the word. Neither was apostles to blame because they shared the word. He gave them. So that leaves us to make that choice. Who do we believe? Do we believe God's word? Or do we believe man? Now I'm going to start reading. Verse 30. And why stand we in jeopardy every hour? In other words, he said, why do we stand this way every hour? putting our lives, our own selves, in harm's way or jeopardy from those that don't believe. Verse 31, I protest by your rejoicing, which I have in Christ, Jesus our Lord, I die daily. He is sitting here, he repented daily. We have to die out of sin daily. We got. We need to ask God to forgive us daily of the sins we do along the way. Now, some seem to think today, when we got saved, every sin that we ever commit in our life, past and in the present and in the future, is already forgiven. The sins we committed before we got saved are, were removed as far from us as east from the west. 
he will forgive us of the others, but we need to ask him to forgive us. We don't live so good that we don't need to ask God's forgiveness daily. And Paul knew that. He told us in his word that he died daily. 32. If after the inner man, after the manner of men, I have fought with beast at Ephesus, what advantage it me if the dead rise not? Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. He had been a telling them about the resurrection, that we would rise again on that great day. But he said here, 32, if, I, if after the manner of men I fought with beasts, at Ephesus, what advantage it me if the dead rise not? Or what, what good am I doing anyone to preaching that the that man will rise if they don't rise? 32. Be not deceived. Evil communication, corrupt good manners. Teaching from people that don't know what they're talking about. Listen to people that throw their own words in and leave God's word out. That's what he's talking about. The evil communication. Talking falsely of the scriptures they know not of. And many of them have, haven't looked into it to know what it says. 30, 34. Awake to righteousness and sin not. You wake unto the righteousness of God. And do sin not. He do not do your best to not sin. For some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. Some think they can't sin after they've been saved. But, but according to God's word, we can and we do. We don't want to, but somehow sin will creep around. Not intentionally for us, but we will, we will be guilty in some way or some form. Therefore, we need to repent daily, die out daily, like Paul was speaking of that he did. He said, I speak this to your shame, that they don't know that knowledge of God. When it's written plain language for us, it's been preached and been teached, but yet people still will not believe. But some, verse 35, but some man will say, how are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? In other words, what body do they come out of the grave with? People ask that question because they're unlearned in the gospel. Now listen to what it says to those that don't care, don't read, they don't study, and they won't believe God's word. Thy fool, that which thou sowest, is not quickened except it die. In other words, it cannot raise up unless it's first been planted. Just like corn or beans or whatever we may plant in our garden. When we plant that seed and cover it with that dirt, it has to rot, decay, then that sprout will come forth and grow and make more corn or more beans, or more vegetables than what we planted. So man has to die out of this life to raise a glorified body one day after a while. 37. And that which thou sowest, thou sowest not that body that shall be, but bare grain it may change of wheat, or, or some other grain. In other words, you don't know 
how it's going to produce after it springs forth from the ground. But it's going to be more than before. Therefore, the body must also decay and die out and decay and go back to bloom again and go back to the Father. 38. But God giveth it a body as it hath pleased him. He didn't say as it pleased man, said as it pleased him. And to every seed his own body. Each seed will produce its own body, its own type of fruit, if you might say. Because peas don't make corn. Corn don't make the peas. Corn makes the corn, and peas will make peas. Thirty-nine. All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh, of man, another flesh of beast, another of fishes, and another of birds. Forty. There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial. He's talking about the natural and he's talking about the spiritual. But the glory of the celestial is one and the glory of the terrestrial is another. On earth people will glory one another. But when we get to heaven, it's going to be heavenly glory for all that's been redeemed and saved by the grace of God. And we're going to give spiritual glory. We're going to give glory to the Father and to the Lamb that gave His life for all on that old rugged cross. Forty-one. There is one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars. For one star differs from another star in glory. He is saying we're all different, but we're all the children of God. We'll all be partakers of that glory of God. Just like, the, like he said, the, the glory of the sun and glory of the stars. People glory in the stars. They are glory in the sun and marvel because the way they hang in the sky and hang on nothing and realize God placed them all in the, in the place they, he wanted them to be and they stayed, they obeyed him and listened and they still obey him today. And they won't move unless he bids them to move. 42. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in, in incorruption. It was sowed in the natural, but it will be raised a spiritual. The corruption, he's talking about the sinful body. But that sinful body ain't going to be the one that will raise from that grave. It's going to be the one that will never decay. He said, here it's sown in weakness. It is raised in power. Now let's read 42 again. So also in is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. Now 43. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. The power of God. The power to be able to live with God and reign with Him forevermore on His throne. Somebody has questions along the way. Will heaven going to be on earth? It doesn't matter where heaven is. 
long as I am there, long as Christ is there, it's going to be heaven wherever he is and we are with him. Forty-four, it is sown a natural body. He is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body, and there is a spiritual body. When you look at a person, you're really looking at two, but you don't see the inside. You see the outside, but we don't see the inside, the spiritual body. Forty-five, and so it is written, The first man, Adam, was made a living soul, and the last man, Adam, was made a quickening spirit. The first man, Adam, was made of the earth, but the second man, Adam, a quickened, made alive within the spirit. When he breathed into his nostrils, he became a living soul. Then the spirit began dwelling in him. So the inside is spiritual. 46. How be it that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterward that which is spiritual is natural when it is first formed out of the dust of the earth. But as I've already stated, it became spiritual when they ble when God breathed into his nostrils and he became a living soul. 47. The first man is off the earth, earthly. The second man is the Lord from heaven. Now let's think about this. The second is the Lord from heaven. And when we were saved, we were granted in to him to be and come alive in Christ forevermore. Therefore, when we saved, he became alive in us and we became alive in him to dwell in together because we were granted in to that olive tree of uh, Jesus Christ our Savior and we're granted into him and we his children through and by the new birth not because man says we are but because God says we are through the new birth and I'll take his word over man anytime anywhere and any place Forty-eight. As the earthly, such are they also that are earthly. And as in the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. Forty-nine. And as we have borne the image of the earthly, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly, just like we bear the image of of the first man, Adam. Now we're to, after we're saved, we're to bear the image of the heavenly. We're supposed to bear the image of our Lord Jesus Christ. How do we do that? But letting him live and reign in our bodies and our, us being obedient to him and following him and making him first of all in our life. First of all and above all in our life. Because he holds the soul in his hand. And he also holds the keys to death, hell, and the grave. Verse 50. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot enter, inherit the kingdom of God. Neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. 
51, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. When this old body drops to the ground, the spiritual body is going to arise and go back to the Father who gave it. The flesh body will be planted in the ground, but the spiritual body will already be gone, be back in the presence of God who gave it. It says in uh, Ecclesiastes, when the silver cord is broken, the spirit returned to God who gave it. Without the spirit, we cannot live. But whether we're dead, other words, it's also saying, whether we are alive when he comes back, or whether we're in the grave, we're going to all be changed to have that glorified body one day after a while that can and will live in the presence of God and the Lord. It has to be glorified to live in His presence because flesh and blood will not be there. 52 in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised in corruption, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. Other words saying, play, play in church, will not get us through. We must truly and for surely without a doubt be born again and washed in Christ's blood that he shed on Calvary. And he had to come into our heart and sup with us and we had to sup with him. Then we are a child of God. Fifty four. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? What the reason today that we can't give God more praise than what we do. Still in the flesh. And no man can give him all the praise he deserves. But we need to be given all the praise. While we live down here. And know he is our, knowing he is our savior. And knowing we have been saved by his grace. Picture 7. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, he's talking to us now. He's talking to those that have been saved, that know they are. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. We can't gain victory through no other except the Lord, Jesus Christ. 58, Therefore, brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. That makes me think today and wonder, the thoughts come to my mind. How many are vain in their worshiping of the Lord? How many is confessing on Sunday and Sunday nights, Wednesday nights, that they're living so good that they do no wrong, 
consider they may be a living a life in Christ in vain. Because it may be a confession to something they don't even have. So let us examine ourselves and thank God that we have been redeemed, that we know that we are saved by His grace and kept by His power. And to realize none of us are perfect, but we're striving to be perfect when we reach that heavenly home that Jesus went to prepare a long time ago when he left this earth out, come forth out of that tomb and when he rose back and ascended back into the heavens he did it because he loved you and I and he went to prepare a place for us that we could live with him when this life is over our most kind and gracious Heavenly Father as again we come to you, Lord, to thank you for the many blessings. We thank you for another day, and we thank you, Lord, for this word you have given us tonight. And I pray, O oh Lord, each one understands what you said in your word. And give us a stronger desire to walk and labor for you in your vineyard. And be a witness to talk to others, those around us, those we have an opportunity to speak to, to tell them of your love and of your saving grace. Give us, give us all a testimony that we can testify how we met you. And Lord, I pray for those who are sick and afflicted and feeble tonight. You reach down, heal, deliver, and touch, and set free. And we pray for those, Lord, that's bound, they are confused. They don't know which way to go. Speak to our heart, Lord, again, and show them that you are the way. Now, Lord, one more time, I ask you to bless us, help us to realize and know that we've been saved, that when this life is over, we lay down our, our life and we close our eyes in eternal sleep, that one day after a while we awake, awake with you at your feet, Lord, where we can give you the praise and honor and glory that we can't give you today, because today, Lord, as we live in the flesh, we don't know how to give you the praise that you deserve. These things we ask in the lovely and the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. And thank you, Father, one more time for your love and your mercy.